Hi there. This is Marielle Conception, your host of the My DPC Story podcast. Have you or someone you care about ever been burned by the U.S. healthcare system? If so, you are listening to the right video, because if you are listening, chances are the answer is yes. But the U.S. spends so much on healthcare. Why are so many Americans affected personally and especially financially by the healthcare system? Shouldn't that mean we have better healthcare access and treatment options? Shouldn't it be easy for us to be able to see our doctor when we need to instead of turning to the ER or urgent care? Historically, it's been seemingly impossible to answer these questions, but now that is changing through the direct primary care movement. This video that you have tuned into will bring you into the world of direct primary care and show you how physicians all over the country are changing the way they practice so patients from all backgrounds get the high quality care they need and deserve, which makes for both happy patients and physicians. Learn even more by subscribing to the My DPC Story YouTube channel. Find us on all major podcast platforms. Find us on socials at My DPC Story and at MyDPCStory.com. There you can find resources including how to find a DPC doctor near you, conferences about DPC, DPC startup guides and advice, a store with DPC swag, and even a mapper showing where podcast guests are practicing. Thanks for tuning in to hear about this powerful movement. Now, on to the episode. Primary care is an innovative, alternative path to insurance-driven health care. Typically, a patient pays their doctor a low monthly membership and, in return, builds a lasting relationship with their doctor and has their doctor available at their fingertips. Welcome to the My DPC Story podcast, where each week you will hear the ever so relatable stories shared by physicians who have chosen to practice medicine in their individual communities through the direct primary care model. I'm your host, Marielle Conception, family physician, DPC owner, and former fee-for-service doctor. I hope you enjoy today's episode and come away feeling inspired about the future of patient care, direct primary care. Direct primary care is the purest form of practicing medicine. I am Dr. Dipti Munkur, and this is my DPC story. Dr. Dipti Munkor received her college degree from Manipal University and then went on to complete her internal medicine residency through UC San Francisco at the Fresno campus. She has completed a primary care psychiatry fellowship in addition to her residency training and opened her DPC doors July 1st of 2020. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Dipti. Thank you. I wanted to start with asking you, how did you come to learn about DPC? I kind of quit my job in March 2020. I used to work at an insurance-based um, employer-based uh, clinic, and um, it was extremely stressful for me. I came home um, almost depressed and something had to change. So I started exploring other ways of practicing medicine because I trained 13 years and there had to be some um, logical, healthy way of practicing medicine that benefits both me and my patients. And so um, as I was searching, a lot of private practice physician friends um, kind of walked me through the insurance-based clinic model and uh, that's when I heard about direct primary care and they added me to Facebook groups uh, of direct primary care physicians. And that's how I learned about it. In terms of planning your practice, given that you left your fee-for-service position in March, when did you actually start planning your DPC and what did you do to strategically plan opening your doors? So about mid-March is when I quit and early April I had already read about DPC and I was looking at possible um, support from local DPC doctors and so I found Dr. Tina Edwards who's in Oceanside um, had been uh, you, you know practicing in a direct primary care model for a while and so um, I emailed her got some information uh, support, a lot of empowerment from her. And then um, 
I kind of read a lot through, I mean, I have to say a lot of information on social media and the internet, which was um, websites like the, uh, DPC Frontier um, and uh, the various EMR systems and, and um, a lot of support from other physicians where I could learn step by step um, about about the direct primary care practice. So it, it, it took a lot of researching and there's, there was every step of the way I kept wondering, would this work for me? Like, is there somewhere financially or something else that would be a hurdle for me? So um, I, I didn't want to get an office space right away because that would mean a, a heavy ho- overhead. And so I kind of um, had, to, had to, every step of the way, look at different options and, and figure it out. Your current practice, do you have a brick and mortar location? No, not right now. And um, the whole, uh, the whole way, uh, as I planned the DPC practice for myself, um, I kept looking at what the brick and mortar office would bring in terms of um, benefits for me and my patients. So right now, there's I don't see any benefit. I just see a huge uh, expense every month <laughs> in terms of rent. So I, I haven't gone 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 anywhere um, into looking for a brick and mortar office. So with your practice not having a brick and mortar location, I'm assuming you're primarily on telemedicine visits. Do you incorporate home visits as well? Yes, that is the plan. Uh, for me to function as a, a primary care physician for my patients, I have to absolutely examine them. And that's core to the practice of internal medicine is is a physical exam. And so I'm going to um, get on my, you know, the EKG machine, a portable machine, a portable uh, spirometer, a portable um, nebulizer, everything that a, an internal medicine clinic would usually need. Um, keep it in my car and then drive up to the patient's uh, home and do home visits. Yeah, that's the plan. Has DPC already met your expectations? Yes. I know that I'm. my income is probably going to take a few months to pick up and maybe even the year. Um, but in terms of uh, the quality of healthcare experience that I provide to my patients, and the quality of my own life, where I, um, I'm not stressed, I'm not depressed, I'm actually not having any moral injury. And, and this uh, direct relationship with my patients is so helpful, both for me and them, um, that I have seen the results show already in terms of, in terms of my happiness. That is fantastic that that has been your experience even just since you've opened your doors months ago it's something that i hope all the dpc doctors who are opening their doors are going through right now in terms of your patient population do you ever feel compelled to say yes to everybody who wants to sign up for your practice that's that's a very interesting question actually I feel like when I first started out um, recruiting patients and I had made my website and patients would call me, I had this sense of uh, trying to be, in, you know, un- subconsciously, I didn't really mean to think this way, but I felt like I was thinking along the lines of, I need to do everything for this patient. Like I have to be the be all, <laughs> you know, kind of service that they're looking, whatever they need, I have to have it. But it's not true, which I've learned over time. It should it should be a good fit for me and for them. And so uh, now what I do is a meet and greet over the phone with COVID-19. We can't really meet in person and we want to avoid um, any exposure to COVID-19 as much as possible. So I do phone meet and greet where um, pretty much I uh, I kind of try to understand what the patient is looking for, what mm, this membership means to them. Um, and their expectations. And then I tell them what um, I can deliver and um, my expectations in terms of uh, having a good relationship with the patient. And and then I take it from there (laughs) to decide if I should say yes or no. If a patient does a meet and greet with you or if they contact you through email and they're still on the fence about what DPC actually is, what do you tell them? 
So generally, I, I kind of do a half an hour meet and greet, explain what um, DPC is like, and I never pressure them into ever saying, oh, you know, I have only limited positions or available, because right now I, I'm really not having limited positions available. I have the time and I can make it, um, make it possible for them to join right away. Um, so I don't use these usual marketing techniques that we see day to day and like almost everything like this coupon lasts only this long kind of attitude. Um, I, I keep it very open for them. I try to just, you know, have them call me as many times as they need to understand this concept because it's new. And uh, the more I sh share the in share information or spread the word about direct primary care, the more they will talk about it. And then there's more patients who might benefit from this. So even if they don't choose um, to to start right away. Have you found that patients are more familiar with direct primary care in your area? Because like you said, Tina Edwards is in Oceanside and, and the population has been exposed to DPC before? Um, surprisingly not. There's probably two to three uh, direct primary care doctors and one of them had a uh, you know, was not accepting any new patients because he had a big enough practice that he wanted to have. And um, he uh, was, you know, specifically in San Diego City and, and some of the other DPCs are a little bit north, uh, north San Diego County, but not particularly in the city. Um, so 1.3 million population and there's concierge practices and so much systemic, uh, systematic normalization of the industry, uh, you know, the uh, insurance based system that people reflexly only ask me if I take insurance. So it's unfortunately not very common to find someone who knows about DPC contact me. Yet. I hope that that is a big yet and that in the future, it will be the opposite way or the other Absolutely. way. Around. I want to draw attention to the fact that you had not only completed your internal medicine residency, but you also did a primary care psychiatry fellowship. For a lot of us in primary care, that was definitely part of our training in residency, but not to the extent of a fellowship. Could you please tell us a little bit more about your experience and your fellowship? Yes, absolutely. So um, when I was in the second year of uh, internal medicine, I kind of knew that primary care is what I wanted to do uh, post-graduation. Uh, um, and so my, my experience in the resident-run clinics was that a lot, almost every patient uh, dealt with depression and some of the depression scores were really almost um, suicidal. And it it affected it affected uh, my workflow to the point that I couldn't focus much on the medical internal medicine issues because the mental health was really coming in the way of a, a good relationship with the patient or a, con a, a healthy conversation about the medical issues. So I really felt like there was a lot for me um, uh, to do in terms of trying to figure out how I could improve my uh, patient's medical health. Um, and, and for that, I, I mean, the key was to really improve their mental health first. And so um, there was a psychiatry uh, professor in Fresno uh, campus of University of California, San Francisco, where I did my training. And he uh, introduced me to this fellowship, which was through UC Davis and UC Irvine. And I was probably the second uh, batch of the fellowship. So it's still ongoing and uh, they welcome um, physicians and uh, residents. And, you know, it's it's uh, about 50 to almost 100 fellows, I think, every year because they it's, it's mostly two conferences and uh, webinars every two weeks for for a whole year. And, and it felt like I, I got one on one mentoring um, quite frequently and it was very useful, very useful for me in my practice. I want to turn to the fact that uh, for some people who might not know yet uh, that Dipti is uh, a whiz at social media and especially producing material through Canva. 
I wanted to ask you if you could tell us a little bit about your experience with Canva and how has it helped develop your practice? I like to toy with, you know, um, apps where I can make videos and um, it, it really was uh, fantastic when I got a chance to actually make all this for my practice. Now it had more meaning. All my uh, designing interests were now focused into trying to help people learn about my practice. So Canva.com actually has been really easy to work with. Um, I probably, you know, just wait for a nice idea to <laughs> come up in my head. And it's usually based on my patient interactions or my experiences, learning about BPC and how it, how it can affect um, the experience for both me and my patients. Um, and then I, I, I just put it all together in Canva and it's actually been, it, it's, it's been incredibly easy. I would highly recommend DPC doctors who are considering uh, marketing their practice to definitely look into Canva. Have you taken the the videos and the posts that you've created off of Canva uh, to a marketing level where you've used print media or social media? What is your marketing strategy like? So um, I I was reading ab about um, you know uh, different marketing strategies that other DPC doctors and physicians have successfully used to go th grow their practice. Um, for the most part, I see uh, that social media has helped spread the word for direct primary care. But I I I think Facebook ads per se have not really brought me any signups. Um, however, there's been lots of local networking through Facebook or even networking beyond the, you know, almost intercontinental networking where people heard about it because they're, they're my friends on Facebook or they follow my page on Facebook and then they could inform someone who lives in California about the services I could provide and then I got a sign up. So um, I have noticed that local networking and uh, just the word of mouth has probably helped a lot um, more than Facebook ads, but I'm still exploring uh, other ways of marketing because it's only been two months since I started and I'm hoping to find more um, ways of reaching to the co local community. You have a blog on your website and I wanted to ask, uh, especially because you're developing content all the time on Canva, how do you develop content or post on your blog? Um, so usually I go along the theme of preventive medicine. So um, if it's, you know, healthy living, nutrition, plant-based diets, or um, if it's got, got to do with, you know, vaccines, um, nutritious food, I try to go along that theme. And also um, one more important thing that I want to do through social media and my blogs is pretty much try and spread the word about DPC, direct primary care, the awareness, because there's, you know, when, when patients hear about it, they, they're just shocked that there's an option like that. And, and it's, it's, it's something I really want to do is to spread the word uh, about direct primary care. That is awesome. And that is a, a goal that we all should have in this movement because it's only through supporting each other and helping each other grow that we're going to make this a force to be reckoned with now and in the future. Yes, absolutely. When you mentioned that people are sending you referrals from potentially a, an out-of-state reference, on your website, you mention that if a person is in town, San Diego is definitely a place where people vacation, that you have special pricing for people who might need to see you on a one-off visit. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, as I kept looking at different uh, models for fees or pricing that I could have with my services, I noticed that the way DPC works best for both me and my patients is with the membership model because of internal medicine, which is a practice of, you know, continued medicine. It's not just one off urgent visits and bye bye, right? Like it's, it's got to do with that continuity of making sure, you know, the meds are working or if the meds need to be stopped, like why keep uh, doing things that might not be actually safe for the patient. So we've always got to monitor and um, make sure we, we have progressed in the health of the patient. So membership model is 
key. And I don't want to shift from that by giving one time visits to um, the local population, because that's really not what I'm, I'm, I'm uh, wanting to do is I want to have that quality care with membership. So, um, but I also do know that there's a lot of people who might be traveling. They don't have a primary care doctor right here and urgent care can be expensive. Uh, they probably forgot their medications or like lost them on their way here or something. And then I would want them to have some um, access. And, and this seems, um, especially because I know when my parents visit from India, um, there's no insurance that's traditional like United Healthcare or something that's easily accessible to them and sometimes it's very expensive and so um, I just want I especially with COVID I know everyone's stuck in the U.S. with all the flights being cancelled and stuff and I want to be available to them so I do offer the one-time visits for visiting um, members. If a patient of one DPC doctor is going to be on vacation in San Diego or another location where there is a DPC, I even see those doctors communicating about a patient so that that transfer of care, even if it's just for a vacation, um, it happens seamlessly. And because doctors are communicating, uh, it's not like an urgent care where you're starting from scratch in a lot of t in a lot of cases. Yeah, this is what I love about DPC is that physicians, DPC physicians have this sort of brotherhood, sisterhood that you could, you know, um, say where, where literally they will do anything that, that they can possibly do to prevent financial harm to patients, to direct primary care pa patients, no matter who's, which physician's patients they are, as long as they, you know, they can help a patient prevent those $2,000, $3,000 of um, you know, healthcare, maybe even debt for some people, they might not be able to afford ER visits or urgent care visits. I really feel like that is key, is where we are able to, as a team of, um, you know, a team of DPC doctors all over the U.S., able to help each other's patients from having unnecessary um, healthcare debt and so we can see their, each other's patients and help them out when they need it. And that is such an understatement, right? A completely unnecessary. Absolutely. Yeah, completely unnecessary um, <laughs> charges for, you know, $60 ibuprofen tablets. It just, just, you know, out of this world, ridiculous uh, things like that that we see every day in medicine. Yes. Yes, it is. It is probably, um, you know, one of the many reasons, one of the big reasons for choosing direct primary care is to make sure your patient gets affordable health care. And it's not in, just in terms of the membership fees, but in terms of the lab costs, in terms of medicine costs, which are unnecessarily inflated um, and, and uh, has to change in the future. I mean, this is the future of medicine. I have become a huge fan of podcasts. Ever since Sarah Koenig hosted the first season of Serial, I was hooked. Now, creating this podcast has become part of my daily life. While it is an exciting new hobby, I also see it as a privilege that I get to interview so many DPC and direct care doctors. If you are interested in starting a podcast, let me tell you a little bit about Anchor. First of all, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast as well with no minimum listenership. It's basically everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Dipti, can you share with us how you manage your medications for your patients and how you manage labs for your patients? Yes, absolutely. So there is um, a particular lab that I've found in San Diego um, through another DPC physician's recommendation. So they provide cash pay lab services. So um, when I order the labs for my patient, they receive an email to an online portal where they can pay for their labs so they know exactly how much they're paying before they get the blood tests 
done, meaning even before they get the blood drawn. So they know exactly how much they're going to spend and there'll be no surprise costs beyond it. Um, even the lab draw fee is a fixed $10 fee. And um, I get the results sent to me and the patient has the result seamlessly without having to make multiple phone calls to get blood test <laughs> results. So I, I like the simplicity of it and also the affordability and um, just knowing the transparent upfront costs is uh, invaluable for patients. And also medications, um, I did, I can in the state of California dispense medications to my own patients, own members. And actually in San Diego right now, I have found an independent pharmacist who you can say is kind of like the DPC of pharmacies. So he also eliminates middlemen that unnecessarily inflate drug uh, charges uh, or costs. And so um, he even does home deliveries and it just works really well for me uh, having uh, an independent pharmacist who also has the same goals as me. Wonderful. And that is great that you have uh, those resources in your area available to patients. Yes, it, 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 it brings great value to the membership. The lab company that is providing a set fee for your patients, do you have to sign up a, through a membership with them? Or how does that work for you to lock in those prices for your patients? Yes. So uh, I do have an annual membership with them. So um, it's, uh, it's just a very reasonable um, ranging from 50 to 200 ish dollars uh, for the annual membership. So then that way I can um, order labs for my patients. Um, and uh, the best part is that because I have um, this license for practicing internal medicine in the state of California, if I do have patients outside of San Diego that need a one-time uh, telemedicine visit, for example, those visiting parents or uh, anyone who's visiting California and, and trying to reach out to a direct primary care practice, I'd be able to do it for them, um, the labs as well, because this online um, lab that I use, it really just uses any lab corp location so as long as the patient has a lab corp location uh, close to them which is one of the common um, lab services that we have uh, throughout throughout the US they can get they can get the blood test done just speaks again to this type of service and the value that DPC is providing to patients. Even in my own fee-for-service practice, if someone is traveling, uh, I can hand them a prescription to get something done or potentially put it in order, but it's not all the time that it, it works on the other end of things, right? So, yes. you know, that is another source of absolute value to your practice and for your patients to take advantage of. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm really grateful. <laughs> With regards to your website, I love the design of it. I just wanted to give you kudos there. How did you go about designing your website? Thank you. I did look into different um, website services, um, and then I ran into renderforest.com, which I don't think anyone's heard of. I, it was the first time I heard of it. Um, and it allowed me to create a website and really get everything up and running without even having to pay them anything, which was, you know, when I'm trying to stay lean with my practice, I really want to make sure my expenses are low um, so that I can, I can charge uh, a reasonable membership and without uh, passing on any expenses to my patients. And this way, if I use a website service that doesn't charge or cost much, I am passing on the savings to my patients. So it's essentially my office because I don't have a brick and mortar office. My website functions like my office. And so I really want to put my uh, personality out there and not look like a, a you know, typical corporate practice. Like I really want them, um, you know, my patients or anyone else who visits my website to know that this is me. This is the doctor you're going to see and interact with for all your interactions with my practice. And so um, I really try to work with just making, you know, the website as much of a person. It's like I really wanted to put my, my views and uh, my goals and everything right out there for them to read. 
It absolutely makes sense. I mean, even just the fact that your website opens with the ocean and the the waves coming in to the the shore. I, what corporation has that on their website? Right, now? <laughs> even just going to your website to begin with, without even clicking on any links or any menus, you get the sense that that this is a down to earth website, right? So, one, I absolutely hear what you're saying and two it absolutely makes sense because you you are a person you're not a cog you you left that system yes and you are portraying that beautifully on your website thank you thank you so much Mary. do you work with a particular business plan and where do you see my happy doctor going in the future so um the way i see it is you know i want to make sure that my quality of healthcare that i provide remains really good and strong um as days go by as years goes go by so uh, there's going to be a limit to how many patients i can see um because i know that we won't i won't be able to see 2000 patients like the insurance based clinics because then again it'll become an assembly line i really want to be available to my patients um and so the goal really is to you know encourage more doctors and more physicians who are already you know at the breaking point with the current uh healthcare system where they just so you know they they've been they've been uh literally thrown from side to side by by all the third parties and then patients get upset when things don't go their way which is natural right because this is about their health and and which is one of the most important aspects um of our lives and so it it can physicians can are really hurt and overburdened and i really want them to break out of that system and know how to practice direct primary care um in a, in and the more the physicians that do this the the better it is for all the patients that who who need healthcare access like for example in san diego there's 1.3 million people and i know there's not more than two or three direct primary care practices and we won't be able to see more than 2 300 even maybe say let's say 600 patients and there's a huge need so my goal is to really empower um other practices to learn and be there there be more my happy doctor practices all over and for those of you who might not be familiar with san diego and the weather in san diego the temperature of the water in san diego <laughs> I would definitely direct them to your website Dipti so they can get a, yes. an image of what that looks like so maybe even your website will encourage others to come join you um, in San Diego. Yeah. In San Diego. Yeah. There you go. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. With you being a telemedicine and mobile practice, do you have any tech or tools that you use and love? You were mentioning mobile EKG machine, mobile spirometry. I I I love asking this question because I really think that even through interviews I've learned about uh, options that I had never heard about before so do you have anything that you use and love Yes I do I mean when I first started this it was all about okay let's see I want to do you know telemedicine so there's some tools some of these devices I found where you could literally the patient could have you know all these devices at home where they just take photographs of the ear canal and the tympanic membrane you know the ear drum and uh even their throat and everything and then I, the, it could it would transmit the device would transmit the photos to me where i'm sitting you know in my remote location for examining um them and then of course some of them are expensive so i didn't end up getting everything but i do have uh the ultrasound which i know you like as well uh the butterfly iq and i do also have the cardio mobile um six lead ekg which is so much easier to carry and if if it's something rhythm related um i would i would it would be handy to you know just use it so the the beauty of dpc or direct primary care is that there's so much high tech you know devices that we can use and high tech electronic medical record systems that we can use where we are trying to limit the time spent on fax machines or uh limit the time spent on um you know looking at the screen and actually spend it with our patients quality time with our patients so the the more the, these devices the better <laughs> and of course i mean as long as it's making sense uh in in terms of keeping your overhead low and you have the autonomy to find a device try it out and decide to use it with your patients and 
I find that the technology that's coming out similar to butterfly is is made for physicians to be able to use it uh, in either solo practice or large group practices. The the technology, like the butterfly, um, is constantly being updated. Take a triple A AAA ultrasound, uh, for example, a screening triple A ultrasound. I think the reimbursement is like one hundred and twenty one bucks or something along those lines. And what does it actually, you know, the, to do the scan? It could take less than a minute to, to do all the necessary views to give your patient an accurate AAA ultrasound scan. And for for these devices especially, you see you see in patients' faces, what magic trick did you just pull out? It's like Mary Poppins pulling out a, a hat rack out of her bag. They've never seen devices that give them instant, you know, views into their body, instant answers to their questions. And so without having, you know, 18 committees to, to vet your device that you want to bring to your patients, you just do it. That yes. Is- yes. And, and you bring a great point because I feel like um, these new devices and the ease of which ease with which we can practice medicine is actually scaring a few of the third parties or almost all of them because the, now they're like, hmm, telemedicine. Wait, how do we charge for that? <laughs> you know, because because the third parties uh, have less to do with the, with the practice of medicine, have more to do with, um, you know, what they're invested in and how they can make money out of this, which is the sad part. They, they, the practice of medicine has become uh, so commercialized that these devices and these cool EMR systems uh, medical record systems, everything threatens um, threatens the third party. So yeah, I'm I'm excited that, that like you said, we can use all these devices without needing any permission because we're doing everything legal and safely too. These devices are FDA approved; they're vetted machines. They're not, you know, experimental drugs uh, in any sense of the in any sense of that word. They are devices that can give us uh, and our patients access to care and answers, um, even potentially at bedside. Absolutely. And save them a lot of money. <laughs> we got to remember that some of this healthcare debt can really ruin patients' lives, and 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 this is this is useful. These devices are useful. Please tell us how you came about your name and logo. <laughs> so I was, um, yeah, I went back and forth a lot about the name, which I guess everyone does, because um, I really wanted to uh, reflect who I am. And um, I know that there are certain words that really make people happy. And for me, I've always been either told, oh, you smile a lot or you laugh a lot or you're laughing all the time or something like that. (laughs) So I knew my happy doctor just would, you know, fit well with me. And it's good. I mean, there's some people who told me, wait, so does that mean your patients think that they have to be happy to see you (laughs) I said you know what it's okay however they perceive it as long as as long as they uh, you know feel like it's a good fit I think happiness is core to um, you know uh, humanity and really important for all of us to have so yeah well it also reflects where you are even just in being open you know a couple of months how you shared with us that you are um, much happier now than you were service right definitely a happy doctor now yes what about your logo my logo yeah that was also through canva i went uh, back and forth a lot i kind of really wanted a simplistic modern look um and uh, there was like you know whether i should have only the words you know my happy doctor or should i even put like a um different um element like like the plus sign that I have so so it and the color is really made you know a difference I really wanted to keep like the teal happy healthy healing colors um and so yeah it took some time but then finally got got that um pink um element and and the my happy doctor in blue teal for those who are looking into starting their practice or even for those who are 
wanting to build a, a stronger social media presence. Do you have any specific resources in addition to, uh, for instance, DPC Frontier that you've already mentioned that you could refer them to? So um, in terms of learning about social media, I, I really got a lot of help from um, um, the direct primary care physicians group and especially some of them like pioneers like uh, Dr. Paul Thomas. He had a few, um, um, I think, videos uh, which we could watch and kind of learn about how we can, uh, without having to spend a lot on marketing like where you spend you pay somebody else to do the social media for you in this case he was trying to teach us how to you know uh, empower ourselves into um, making uh, social media a, a means of trying to help uh, spread the word and get get signups um, so I, I would say there's books written by direct primary care physicians which are reasonable available on Amazon um, and and I, I guess it was mostly, you know, really a lot of, uh, really a lot of just looking at how others are doing it and then asking them about oh, what app did you use or how did you, you know, end up. And that's how I heard about Canva.com. So um, I've actually um, created like a list for anyone who messages me on Facebook. <laughs> Or any place, you know, even emails me about, hey, I saw that you do direct primary care. Can you tell me a little bit more? So I have listed all the free resources um, and I'm happy to share it with you. Um, so pretty much I mentioned DPC Frontier and then I mentioned Atlas MD. Um, and I know they are a medical record system that we can buy. Um, but I also can tell you that I never felt like they forced me to buy it or, you know, but they really went out of the way to tell me all the ways in which I can um, set up my practice. And, and frankly, it was almost like having a friend um, who's a d direct primary care physician help you um, build your practice. So I, I think there's the, you just have to ask for it. And there's people who will be happy to help you in the direct primary care world. On that note, what is the best way for others to reach out to you? I would say um, you could email me at md at myhappydoctor.com or you could open my website www.myhappydoctor.com and message me from there. Thank you so much, Dr. Dipti, for sharing your story today and joining us today. Thank you, Maria, for having me over. Next week, look forward to hearing from Dr. Emily O'Rourke of Fountain Direct Primary Care. Until then, this is Marielle Conception. For more information on this episode and much more, please visit mydpcstory.com.